In this video, we'll look at some real examples of unacceptable fusion joints in the data logger vault and learn what artifacts should never show up on a successful joint report. The first report we'll review shows an improper shift sequence. In part one, the proper shift sequence showed a steep, rapid drop from the beat up pressure down to the drag heat soak pressure. Notice that in this report, the pressure drop is gradual. This indicates that the shift sequence was performed incorrectly because the heat soak time does not begin until the pressure was dropped to drag or below drag and improper shift sequence can result in inadequate heat soak. Next, let's look at a report that shows an inadequate heat soak time. Notice the spike in the graph that happens before the end of the green box. This tells us that the operator opened the carriage before the specified time had been reached. This fusion does not comply with the standard and should be evaluated to determine if further action is required. Now, let's look at cool time. This report shows an insufficient cool time. We can easily see that this joint didn't cool long enough because the pressure drops off before the full cool time has been reached, which is indicated by the purple colored box. If the pressure drops off too soon, that means the carriage pressure was released too early. If the line disappears before the end of the purple box, that means the data logger was turned off before the full cool time was reached, which keeps you from knowing if the full cool time was achieved or not. Both examples do not comply with the standard and should be evaluated to determine if further action is required. This next report shows a joint that was created using incorrect pressure settings. Since the pressure line does not stay within the colored boxes vertically during the heat soak and cool time, we know that the pressures weren't set correctly before the fusion was started. Pressures can be determined using the Macauk app or our fusion pressure calculator. This joint report shows examples of pressure spikes. These spikes may appear during beat up and initial contact after heater removal. In this example, the first spike indicates the pipe coming into contact with the heater and the initial beat up cycle. Most importantly, when the pressure is reduced to the heat soak cycle, the pressure has dropped to the green range and stays in that range for no less than the time shown. The second spike might indicate the two ends of the molten pipe coming together. Some small spikes may occur in the initial contact, but should remain inside the range indicated by the purple box for the cooling cycle. If the pressure goes above the maximum or below the minimum allowed pressures shown during a given cycle, the joint should be investigated further. In order for the information to be shown accurately on the graph, the details associated with pressure calculation need to have been correctly entered. These points include machine, cylinder size, pipe size, DR, material, and fusion standard. It is good practice to review the report page before reviewing the fusion guide graphs to verify the data points have been correctly entered. It is also good practice to be sure that the calibration date of the data logger used is within one year of the fusion date of the joint being reviewed. McElroy recommends that data logger units should be calibrated on an annual basis. Now that you've learned some of the points to look for when reviewing a joint report, you should be able to identify the difference between a joint that complies with a given standard and one that does not. The joint report and review become another tool to help further enhance your quality assurance and quality control program. For more videos on the Data Logger Vault and how to use it, visit www.macaroy.com forward slash datalogger.